Well, hi to everybody today. I hope everyone's having a great Sunday. I just wanted to quickly say that I'm loving the Nativity play. And that's just been absolutely fantastic. I didn't think we'd be able to do one this year. And so to have one online is just wonderful. Well, we are nearly in December now. And soon the rest of the world will start opening their Advent calendars and will catch up with us since we've been opening ours since the 1st of November. And we're on this road to Bethlehem, aren't we? Looking at the story through the eyes of the people involved. And this week we reach this amazing character, probably one of my favourite characters in the story. This is the innkeeper. We don't even know his name, but he's famously known as that innkeeper in Bethlehem. And we know that for hundreds, even thousands of years, the prophets have predicted that someone was coming. They called him the Messiah, didn't they? The anointed one. They said he would be more important than anyone else who had ever been born. And those prophets looked out into the future at that time. And then they said things like, I can see him, but not now. I'm looking at him, but he's far out in the future. A star is going to come and is going to rise. And as time went by, those prophet, those prophecies became more and more amazing. They declared things such as his name. His name would be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and his kingdom would know no end. These were extraordinary things that they began to say about him. And do you remember we looked last week at this, that those prophecies became very detailed. They described in detail where he was going to be born. Bethlehem, from you a leader will come. Out of Egypt I've called my son, that Jesus would live for several years in Egypt. He'll be called a Nazarene, that he would grow up in Nazareth and people would refer to him as coming from Nazareth. And that in the end, he would move to Galilee of the Gentiles, which was east of Nazareth, near that amazing sea. And in that place, the light began to shine, didn't it? When Jesus was 30 years old and this sun of righteousness began to rise with healing in his wings. All these details were described in the Old Testament for this incredibly important person. And then as the time drew near for him to come, angels, who's ever heard of such a thing? Angels announced his birth, first to his mother and then to his earthly father, Joseph. And then out in heaven, God began to move right far out in the darkness of space and a star began to shine. How extraordinary. Those wise men from the east called it his star. It's his star. It's the star of the coming king. And those men from the east who'd read the scriptures that Daniel and others had left behind and who'd watched that star began to make their way towards him. And then on earth, the most powerful man on earth, God moved in his mind and Caesar Augustus, that Roman emperor, made a decree, didn't he, that all the world would be taxed. He said everyone's got to go back where they came from. And do you remember the map, all orchestrated by God, that they would move from that northern area of Nazareth down to Bethlehem where you can see that little manger so that Jesus would be born in exactly the right place. And so they set out to head down for Bethlehem and this precious baby is now on his way to where he needs to be, to where to, for those prophecies to be fulfilled. Remember, there was no other baby whose birth had been predicted like this. He must have been the most important child to ever be born. And so surely you would have thought there would be a palace for him. Surely the whole world would be waiting for his coming. Coming. But on that night, as they arrived in Bethlehem, there was no palace. There were no huge crowds to greet them. Martin Luther, the great reformer, says this amazing thing of that night. When Mary and Joseph arrived at Bethlehem that night, they were insignificant and despised. No one noticed or was conscious of what God was doing in that place. God let the inhabitants of the large houses eat and drink and be merry. But this comfort, he's talking about Jesus, this treasure was hidden from them. Extraordinary. So as they arrive and they begin to search for a place for her to have this baby, because the baby is beginning to come and they just keep hearing these same words, there's no room. The whole of Bethlehem is full. There's no room. Not only was there no palace for him, But there was no room. And wherever they went, they heard the same words. There's no room. The Bible says there was no room for them in the inn. What a challenge for the world. What a challenge for us 
no room for God. The Victorians used to sing this hymn during that time of that amazing Victorian revival and they used to ask this question, have you any room for Jesus? Room for pleasure, room for business, but for Christ the crucified, not a place that he can enter in the heart for which he died. What a relevant question for us today. Have we any room for Jesus? Have we got room for this comfort, as Luther called him, this treasure in our hearts and lives? And then finally they arrive at an inn and here's our innkeeper. Here's a picture of how he might have looked with Mary and Joseph. And he says, I'm so sorry, we've got no room in the inn, but I've got a stable. Hallelujah for the stable. There was a stable. God didn't leave them with nowhere. God had prepared a place for him. It was a stable. God had chosen all of this. This mighty Messiah and coming king was going to be born in a dark and a messy place. What a picture. What an amazing picture. Jesus was coming into humanity's mess and into the chaos. What a picture for us in our lives, that he wants to come into the stable of our lives, into the muddle, into the chaos, into all our imperfections, into our troubles, into our difficulties, into our disputes, into our struggles on the inside and the outside. He wants to come. How wonderful he still wants to come. Even today, he wants to come. And so into the stable he was born and it says that Mary took him, she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, she wrapped him in these, in this, in these, in these cloths and swaddled him. That's a kind of trendy modern word for how you wrap up a baby into a little bundle and she lays him down in a manger. And so he'd come. And this light of this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the very image of God, began to shine on the earth. What a story, what a story, what a challenge for us. Have we any room for Jesus? Could we make room, for, a bit more room for Jesus in our hearts and our lives at this time? Let's pray. Jesus, we worship you today. Your name is wonderful. Your name is Counselor. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace and your kingdom will know no end. We ask again, Lord, open our eyes to see these wonders. Cause us, help us to make more room for you in our lives. Would you come today into the stable, into the muddle, into the, the mess of things, Lord? Would you come and visit us, Lord, um, and draw near to us today? Amen. Amen. Oh,